asked you before about the trend in the shots. Is it, again, they're just not falling? Is there anything else that you guys can discern on the sidelines? I mean, our overall execution and pace the, uh, in the half court I thought was great early in the first quarter. I mean, it was Chris, the ball was moving. Uh, there was plenty of ball and body movement, which uh, was good to see. Those are the misses that, you know, we're, we're comfortable with. Um, we started to bog down a little bit and kind of fell into that same trap of stagnating, not executing. We weren't always in the right spot. Um, you know, we don't value those possessions. It, it catches up to you. And it's not just the turnovers. Those are the obvious ones. But the wasted possessions, the broken possessions, where we're not organized and, you know, possessions that start bad usually end bad. And so the, the combination of those two, I think, uh, you know, they really hurt us. You talk about on defense, the multiple effort, but when a play breaks down on offense, are you are you seeing that disorganization kind of, OK, nobody's adjusting the right way on the fly? Uh, yeah, well, some of it, too, is the, you know, once those plays break down, um, we kind of just stop and stand. You know, we, we have to be comfortable, continue to keep energy in the ball. And it's not always just, you know, one guy, you know, making a play for everybody else. You know, Open up the nail, move, cut, respace. Um, takes a little bit of effort, and you know, at, at times, if you, you know, you're not getting the payoff, um, you stop doing it. That's where we have to fight that, you know, disease of me, and just say, hey, I got to do what's best for the group right now. I think they started ten of sixteen from three, so you guys finished better than the overall percentage. But why do you think that three point defense was? Uh, well, into the half, I thought, you know, uh, you know, the small, small pick and roll gave us problems. Where we weren't uh, switching at the level. The ball walked into a couple. Um, third quarter, the, the transition threes, uh, Rozier got. You know, I know he made eight of them, but I would probably guess, I know for sure three, if not four, were just in transition. You know, there's, there's, there's really no coverage for that. It's just urgency and effort, awareness to get to that guy, um, understand he's got a game rolling, so it's a priority to find him. What made Terry Rozier just so tough in general tonight? Yeah, he's one of those guys that, you know, he sees it go in um, and he, he can he can get he can really get going, uh, heat up quickly. Um, and, you know, I think it's we had that stretch where, you know, we couldn't buy a stop, you know, called the timeout and we changed our own complexion, didn't change the coverage. The, the fact that, you know, um, our care factor went up a bit. You know, it's it's that part's good that we responded, but the fact that we have to respond, you know, uh, at all. That's just who we should be. Um, finding a way to, you know, continue to play that way every every minute. You know, being in the right spot, being in the right coverage, communicating the right commands, doing everything I need to do in that possession, offensively and defensively. It's you know, it, it's not always easy, but that's the challenge. You guys uh, out rebounded them by thirty one and and lost. I feel like that probably doesn't happen very often. Is there something that you guys should have done differently to take advantage of that uh, advantage that you had? Our conversion rate wasn't great, you know, where they got back taps and 50-50 balls and they converted. Not all, but a lot of them. So, uh, you know, it's a great stat. You know, it's good that we have uh, you know, are able to out-rebound a team. But then again, if they're, they're not missing, <laughs> not a whole lot of rebounds. Wes, are you um... – I guess, what do you see from Spencer's level of activity tonight? Uh, I don't think it was where it should be. Um, he had some, some good moments. But um, on a night like tonight, we need more. And that's not just him. We need it from everybody. And uh, it's, you know, it's got to be a priority. That's, you know, can we sustain our play? Not to press, but more in terms of getting other guys open or kind of leading those second efforts on offense. No, I think it's, I mean, in, in – every facet of the game. And uh, like I said, it's not just him. I mean, I think we all have to, um, you know, look in the mirror. I got to look in the mirror. I got out coached. bottom line. Um, so how do we respond? How, how do we, you know, learn from this? We've been able to skate by getting double digit deficits and, and climbing our way back into it. And that's a great story, but do we learn a lesson, you know, into the second, um, start of the fourth or start of the third, rather, you know, I think it was a 22 to eight run. Uh, we, we can't do that. You allow teams that momentum, it's really, really difficult to, you know, regroup, uh, weather that storm, and then climb back into a game. Are there things you guys can do to get more uh, Brad more into a rhythm or anything? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, and once again, that every team is going to key their defense to start around him. Uh, so it's never going to be easy. Um, you know, it's easier when we're, we're getting stops. 
we're, we're turning those uh, transition opportunities into, into easy, easy points. Um, but if we're just always, you know, taking the ball out of the net, walking it up and trying to execute against a set defense, a defense that has shown you know, their flexibility to switch to zone, uh, to manipulate at some point, um, it's, it's really tough. So if we get stops, obviously we have to finish possessions and rebound, then it's, it, it turns into easy offense for us. Josh. Coach, are you seeing enough of uh, enough attacks on the paint, enough drive drives and kicks, that, that sort of thing? Tonight, no. Um, in general, I would say yes. Um, you know, it's we struggled from three, um, and we have, you know, we've had some difficulty from the three point line, you know, early in this season. But um, you know, our paint attacks overall um, have been pretty good. Wes said the issues on the offense, what he saw was disorganization and not valuing possessions. What are you seeing out there? How do you kind of explain it? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, a little bit, you know, it's, uh, I think we could definitely get, in, get into our flow a little bit faster. Um, definitely some miscommunication, not, not on the same page at times or everybody not knowing to play. Um, we got to be better at that for sure. Uh, but I think it starts on the defensive end. We don't get stops enough for us to be able to get on and create some advantages for ourselves. It's tough when you have to play in a half court the whole game. So, uh, especially against an athletic team like them, like they can switch one through five, they can guard, you know, they, they junk it up. So uh, they just made it tough. You know, we have to be better at getting stops and getting on and running and getting some easier one, easier looks for us. Kind of on the other end, what did you see on the perimeter defense tonight? I was a one-on-one -on -one game. That's what it was. It was guard to man. It was a few hot picking rows earlier in the game. Like they were running stack action a lot. Uh, throughout the course of the game. Um, that bothered us for sure. Uh, we made the adjustment at halftime and, and kind of slowed that down. But then at the end of the game, it just became one-on-one. -on -one. You know, they called out who they wanted and broke down the defense and got to the basket, you know. So uh, all it came down to was guarding the man, guarding the matchup and taking that challenge, so. You said a lot before the year that, you know, offense will be fine. We just kind of had to focus on defense because that's where we've been. But. I think entering this game, you guys are like 17th in offensive rating. Is the offense not where you thought it would be? Or how do you kind of go about just fixing that? Uh, I mean, obviously, we know the biggest adjustment with a new team, new system is always going to be offense. Is rarely ever the defense. You know, it's because you're getting used to new things, new plays, new system. Defensively, everything is usually the same, you know, um, or at least conceptually, they're the same. You know, so offense-wise, it's, you know, getting adjusted, getting used to guys' tendencies. Um, you know, what certain plays are our go-tos, what work for us. And uh, and we're still getting used to playing with each other still. So, like I said, it's only, we're not even 20 games in yet. So we're still adjusting. Uh, but it's not where we wanted to be, obviously, but um, we're not 30th, so <laughs> it could be worse. What's that uh, process been like for you? Just, you know, getting the rhythm of, of the plays and knowing where you're supposed to be in that sort of thing? Uh, it's, it's a work in progress, for sure. Um, I'm still learning, you know, how coach wants to utilize me and, you know, where I fit in best here and just just adjusting as we go, um, for sure. And then as teams are constantly guarding me and just kind of figuring it all out, it's, it's, it's an adjustment. It's tough, for sure. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're figuring it out on the fly. You guys out rebounded them uh, 77 to 46. It was plus 31. Um, usually with advantage like that, you really, yeah, you think a team would win. Um, why, why do you think that you guys weren't able to take advantage of that huge discrepancy? Yeah, it's kind of frustrating here. Um, because last game they kicked our butts on the boards. I think they kicked Atlanta's butts on the boards. I think uh, they had like 20 offensive rebounds last game or something like that. Um, and that was our point of emphasis tonight, making sure that we limit them to one shot and get out. And here we beat them 30 by 31. It's kind of, it's definitely disheartening. You know, that just goes to show we didn't execute on the other end, so. And the pass you had to Trez uh, was like 93 feet and it was right on the money. Um, is it safe to say you don't practice that very often? Is that like your <laughs> instincts? Yeah, it's all instincts. You know, uh, it's funny, we had a, we had like a little throwing day practice and, uh, training camp with footballs and stuff and Trey's got mad at me because I underthrew him a little bit uh you know he's a tight end so he he likes the ball high to where he can only get it and uh that's something we learned like I, I always see him like he contests the shot he gets out on the run and he has long arms and he knows how to go get the ball he meets the ball at his highest point like receivers should do um so you know I just I just throw it up use a little bit of my old quarterback skills and 
trust Chaz to do the rest. Um, just going back to the offense, you know, you guys are missing uh, like Bryant, Bertans, and Rui. Like, how much do you think their additions eventually will help you guys fix that? Oh man, it, tremendously. You know, I'll be lying if I said that we don't miss those guys. You know, we have we've had success. We're what eleven and six now, and we've had some success, but you know, they they are still vital pieces to our team, to our core. You know, uh, we definitely miss Rui, TB, uh, Bertans. Hopefully, he's back next game. Um, but you know, we. We have a lot here still, you know, even with the guys out. So, you know, as much as we can't make that excuse, you know, we do miss those guys, but we still have enough to, to win games and we've proven that. So what made uh, Terry Rozier so tough tonight? I think he was pissy the way he played last game against us, you know. Uh, so he came out with a chip on his shoulder and he <laughs> he came and lit us up. So, uh, I mean, he was aggressive from start. <clears throat> he got a couple threes. Early on, early looks on, and you know, T. Rozier has always been a problem. So, uh, you know, once he was going, it was kind of worried a little bit. Kind of worried a little bit, but he had a good game. You, you tip your hat off to him. All right, we'll go to Zoom. Neil. So Brad, you know, coach was like, you know, it was nice that you guys responded, were able to get back into the game, but at the same time, you shouldn't have to over and over again have to respond to these deficits. What is he conveying to you guys, and how do you guys have that consistency you guys want for a full 48 minutes? Uh, I mean, the same thing he's telling you guys. I mean, it's, we got to be better at the beginning of quarters, um, first and third particularly, and then closing out the second and fourth. Um, you know, those were a lot of our – uh, the runs come in at and where we have to be better at and we we come in and we kind of dig ourselves a hole early on and it hurts us you know because we we end up climbing back like we're down what 16 again tonight or something like that and uh you know we fight all the way fight all the way back you know to potentially get the lead and then you know we're down 10 again you know so just that energy of energy drain of trying to catch up kind of catch up you know eventually you know teams going to stop their run and go on another one so uh, we have to do better of just not digging ourselves a hole, especially first and third. And that's on the starters. And the miscommunication that you were talking about, is that somewhat related to the turnover issue tonight? Uh, it could be. It could be. Um, I didn't look at the stat sheet, and I don't know how many we had or I had, but it's, we had a lot of, we had a few, we had a few unforced ones uh, for the most part. And, and we just, we got to be better at doing that. We got to be better at taking care of the ball. Some of them were some miscommunications of just us not being in the right spots in certain plays and not meeting the ball. Um, but a lot of them were just lack of days ago, bouncing off our foot, losing the ball. Thanks, Brad. All right, last question to Josh. Brad, that was maybe the best ball movement, body movement, first qu or quarter your team has had all season, certainly up there. Uh, did the Hornets do anything to adjust and take your team out of that uh, ball movement and that rhythm? Uh, that's tough to say. Um, I feel like at times we kind of, we get complacent and think we can kind of flip on the switch and turn it on or kind of get away from our game plan or get away from what works. You know, we have to stop doing that. We got to stick to what's been working. Um, and stay on it, you know, and that's body movement, player movement. And when we do that, we're really good. You know, when we don't, we're very stagnant. We watch, we ball watch, and it gets, it's very ugly offense to watch. So we gotta be better at that. You know, it's just a matter of drilling it, you know, figuring out what plays work for us and, and making sure we're on the same page. I think made the difference for them tonight. Um, They made shots. Um. You know, they got comfortable from the three-point line early and um, it carried over into the second half. Um, simple as that. Uh, we had a lot of, you know, miscommunication out there as far as on the defense end, um, things that we kind of wanted to do um, and kind of take them out of. Um, and, you know, we didn't really do that. Um, Terry started out the game hot. Um, it looks like he was 8 for 11 from one player. And... That's all shooting threes, man. So that's tough. You had uh, 18 rebounds. You guys actually out rebounded them by 31, which is a pretty big margin. 
What's uh, kind of key to taking advantage of that part of the game when you guys do have such a discrepancy? Um, scoring the ball, man. Um, you know, continues to run our offense, and we need to actually continue to um, execute the plays all the way through and through. Um, you know, we can't try to get it all back in one possession. We can't try to, you know, make up our own, um, you know, things as we go. Um, we just got to keep doing it together. And I think we hit a, um, you know, we hit some aspects of the night where, where, you know, I thought we were just trying to get it all back in one play instead of just letting it come to us or, you know, letting it find us throughout the offense. You know, we tried to break the rhythm of it and, um, you know, just try to, you know, put ourselves in, you know, hero ball position. And we can't do that, man. We got to continue to do what got us here, what got us in this situation, what got us um, to where we at, um, you know, just thus far. You took that hard hit and obviously came back, but what is kind of your process like of, I don't know, shaking it off or I saw you got on the bike, like just kind of working through, uh, I guess, the pain? Um, I'm good, man. Like I tell people all the time, like I tell you guys all the time, like, I'm a tough individual. I play football, um, you know, all the way up to my senior year of high school. Um, and that's because I transferred. And, um, you know, it was one of those situations I kind of got exposed in the eye real quick. Um, you know, anybody who get hit in the eye, you know, your eyes going to warm up, you're going to lose vision that, you know, eye a little bit. But for the most part, man, I, I was good. And, you know, I, I look for the contact. You know, I try to, you know, embrace that. Um, that's kind of like my game. So um, it's not really anything that kind of bothers me in general and nothing that I have to really work off because, you know, like I said, I look for that contact and look for that physicality to the game. Speaking of football, what did you make of Brad's throw to you? Um, touchdown. <laughs> you know, I tell them guys, man, whenever they put the ball out, um, you know, no matter what, you know, put it out there. I'm going to catch it and come down with it um, before it be any of you guys turn over. So, you know, I think they're starting to get to the point where they have more confidence to, you know, put that lead pass out there, you know, put that full court pass out there because it's, it's a big, it could be a big part of our offense um, before defense even has a chance to set up. Brad said that uh, it reminded him when you guys were throwing footballs at, uh, at practice and he said he underthrew you. Yeah, no, nah, that, that pass was stung. That, that pass was horrible. <laughs> that pass was horrible. He, he really made clues, really, that he could play football and, and cover me in the route. That, that pass was horrible. <laughs> Josh. Montrez, what uh... – can you describe your approach to rebounding? You had a, I know it doesn't matter to you that it was a career high tonight, but it was a career high, and you just seem to have a knack of getting offensive rebounds, especially that other people can't get. Um, it's a will. I think it's um, the competitive spirit in me. I think it's the passion and the way I love to play the game and actually, you know, be around this game. Um, you know, if you look at any of my interviews, you know, previous um all the way up until now man i tell you guys all the time it's a blessing to be able to play this game and call it my job man so um you know offensive rebounds defensive rebounds you know that's part of uh you know my job requirement man and um i take very high pride in it really man um a lot of people um you know thus far in the league have always said i couldn't rebound or he can't rebound out of his position or you know out of the ball you know in his area man i've, I've heard that a lot of many times man so um, I don't know, you know, what, what do you have to say now? Is it more so that I can't rebound out of my position or, you know, I just wasn't given the opportunity? Thank you. Neil. Hey, Trez, I, I know you pride yourself on bringing that passion, you know, every game, every night. Multiple times today, it seemed like you were imploring your teammates, you know, let's go, let's go, let's make this comeback. Was there something about today that you felt like, okay, I really need to even try and dig deeper and bring more out of my team? Uh, no, um, I, I do it every game. Like you said, it's every, um, you know, aspect of coming into the game and uh, preparing uh, for the game, really, man. It's something that I do. It's something that, you know, I'm kind of known for in general. So um, if I come in with the wrong spirits or I come in with the wrong type of energy, my teammates are going to see that, man, and it's not going to – put this in the in the place that we're trying to go and it's never going to you know be good for anybody man um so at the end of the day man no matter how I'm playing no matter how you know the game is going for myself that, that's why it's not it's not about that it, it's a team game it's a team sport man and I'm out there for my team so um it's nothing different that I do it from any other game man um this night wasn't no different um all the reason why it seemed like I was you know more passionate or more fired up about the night is because we were down early, man. Um, we was down early uh, in the second half, big. Uh, you know, I think it was 10 to 
No, 15. And that's tough to, you know, kind of come back from. We just did it the other night, man. But we don't want to keep putting ourselves in these situations, man. We, we're going to burn ourselves out. Um, it's a long year, and we don't want to have to keep trying to, you know, prove that we can fight back to come back on teams, man. Like, why, why, why do we keep putting ourselves in these situations?